Thank you for listening to the Three Bros Podcast, episode number three. We talk about managing conversations when you disagree politically. Did we figure out how to include that one uncle for Christmas? Probably not, but it might help Christmas be a little more enjoyable. Let us know if we helped out at Party Unified. Thanks again for listening. You're not wrong. That's what I just said. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Three Bros Podcast. Incredible Uh, introduction. (laughs) I am here along with Chad and Cyril as usual. Uh, This week, I ran across an article from the American Psychological Association that I found interesting. Uh, It's called Managing Conversations When You Disagree Politically, Helpful Tips to Guide Conversations About Sensitive Topics in a More Positive Direction. Easy. Um, Yeah, I mean, I find this interesting because (laughs) it's something that we do all the time. We talk about some pretty difficult things and uh, we're still brothers and still friends at the end of it. Not everybody has that same experience. Um, In fact, according to uh, this article, uh, to a November 2020 APA survey, 40% of adults say the political climate has caused strain between them and their family members. That's such a high Uh, number. Yeah, I I mean, do you, do you, I, I do too. I mean, I'm not going to say I believe or disbelieve it because I have no evidence, but um, they do cite their survey. I just feel like, anyways, keep going, Caleb. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, I find that interesting because, you know, ultimately I think a lot of people have difficulties with their families, maybe even friends or uh, even coworkers. And the first question that I have first and foremost for you two is, do you guys run into situations where you disagree with people? Uh, on such a scale, like in your daily life, whether it be coworkers, family, outside of obviously the three of us, Chad, how about you? Oh, oh a thousand percent. Um, I, the people that I regularly come into contact with in my life, whether it be work or friends or family, whatever, it's a very mixed bag politically. Uh, particularly work, a lot of people that disagree with me there, but um. <clears throat> but I, I never have, I'm such a passive person that even if I'm talking to somebody that I wildly disagree with, I'll give very minimal pushback uh, just to maintain the conversation. I am not good at advocating for the things that I believe in, um, mostly because I just feel like, and especially with some of the people that I work with, there is just such a mindset like, if I were to put a label on myself and tell them that label, they would make several assumptions about me. You know what I mean? It's, it's I don't know. I've, I've found that the best way that I can have conversations is I just listen a lot. And even if I wildly disagree with people, I'll give a minimal pushback and I'll just mostly listen. So um, I'm definitely surrounded by people I wildly disagree with, but I don't... Do, do you find yourself using different strategies? Let's say you were with a group of people as opposed to like just one-on-one. Is there a difference there for you, Chad? Uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, again, there's plenty of people that I work with that I disagree with, but the only time I've ever made progress in a conversation was one-on-one for sure. Cause I feel like you could have somebody empathize with you a little better if you're having that one-on-one conversation. As, as opposed to, like, being in a group. Um, right. But again, I don't... Know. Is fickle, right? <clears throat> the only people that I have really candid, like, not provocative, but, like, uh, pushing types of conversations is typically with friends and family that I'm comfortable with. It's not usually coworkers or strangers or, you know, even, like, dumb comments on the internet. For the most part, you just... It's not worth your time or it's really difficult to change somebody's mind or you know i don't know yeah no that's that those are all fair things um cyril how about you do you have these experiences or similar issues i i imagine maybe a little bit i mean we all do so i definitely do the question is why we respond the way we do to those situations because hmm. like I don't, I don't have them work wise, but definitely when I have them in life, which I do have them a lot, whether it's, you know, people that are close to me in my orbit or family or whatever. Um, 
I mean, is there anything you do in particular to deal with that? Like, do you go to a specific strategy? It sounds like Chad Moore just listens and takes a backseat role in the conversation and lets people. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely will listen a lot because I have respect for human beings, which is I, which is why I think Chad does that too. And he'd probably agree with that. Like, regardless of who's talking to you, someone, someone is right. So you'll listen. And I do. And, but I, I think it's more than that though, because you only have so much time in your life to listen. Right. So, yeah, I think, um, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I'd like to think, and I do think, I think you guys do too, that I've surrounded myself with, um, whether it be lucky through family or through the people I've actively tried to surround myself with, I surround myself with like good people for that. Um, in a way that it's not like we're always agreeing, but we're not like fighting at all. It's just like discussion. So yeah. Most I think you time. need to have like a healthy respect to, to, to be able to disagree and have a healthy conversation. You need to build respect in the first place. And I think as I think of everybody in my life that I'm able to disagree and have a great conversation about it and maybe even have my mind, mind changed. It's because I know them as a person and they prove to me in a lot of ways that I, that like their intentions are not bad. Mm. Right. And I think that's the problem that all of us run into. Like when you don't know someone or someone can be made a caricature of in the media or whatever, you have such a disconnect with it. Right. Yeah. That like you can just write, but someone who might be an opposite mind of mine on a certain subject, if I've known them for a long time and I respect them and I respect their intentions and I know them as a human being, and they say, well, what about this? Then I'll listen to them. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting because I, I think you bring up a really good point there. And a lot yeah. of people, especially in today's age, are much more willing to just tell you exactly what they think about whatever is at hand without having that pretense kind of respect building or conversation. But we're not those people. What do you mean? Like the three of us, we don't like to like, do you know how many times we've tried to get on here and we should, and I think it'd be awesome. And I'm already having a great time doing it. How many times have you gotten on here, tried to talk about something, but all three of us at one point or another, or at the same time are like, well, we're not experts. And we always like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, cause we, we, we want, like, we don't want to take advantage. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to be you, that person. Do you, you know what I'm saying? You want to be a grifter? Correct. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of money yeah. in it. There's a lot of money in it. It's true. Uh, we would never see a dime of it. But what I find interesting about what you're saying is that what you're saying is that before you even want to entertain the idea of getting into a conversation like that, you would prefer to be able to um, have a, 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 I don't know, let me try to think of like the the right word, but like a, like a set established relationship where you can say, I believe this person is a good person. They mean well, so I'm willing to listen to more of what they're talking about. Yes, but I think that applies to all human beings, right? Like whoever's directly in your life, whether or not they're spouting misinformation or not, or whether or not they're quote unquote evil or not, whoever's in your life is going to influence your life. So in that way, like people who you've built prior relationships with, you're just going to have a certain level of trust and which is unavoidable. I I would say, go ahead, Ted. I would say personally knowing people gives you a better idea of whether or not they're arguing in good faith. Because a lot of the times, um, especially when you get to people who are just Correct. playing for their team, they're not arguing in good faith. They're arguing to argue. They're arguing to be right. And they're arguing to win. And it's and when someone on Twitter tweets, Tucker Carlson's right, and they have no personal relationship with him. That makes me be like, well, you don't even know him as like, anyways. <laughs> wait what and goes yeah. to the other side too well I'm, I'm, to me it just when they say Karl Marx is right you have to be like well well do you sorry. know him no what I'm saying is when you when you well, when you're <laughs> when you're talking damn it all right when you're talking to somebody directly in your life you know them and you know whether or not they're arguing in good faith I could have somebody that I'm close with but if I know they're not arguing in good faith I'll just avoid the conversation because right. if somebody is not being... But you could maintain a relationship. Oh, of course. Yeah, we're just not going to right. have those conversations because, you know, one of us is not able it's to have a nuanced opinion. And that's fine. That doesn't bother me. We just won't talk about those things. It's just a lose-lose it's fine situation. Because, 
people like us have accepted that it's fine to be fair but yes it's fine well i just know that there's nothing to gain there from having those provocative conversations now if i'm if i'm talking to somebody who's in good faith somebody who's honest somebody who's going to actually listen to the things that i'm saying and i'll do the same vice versa those are i'll have those conversations 24 7 because those are great conversations but if you have conversations where you know it's just going to be antagonizing when you know people are just trying to quote unquote win, oh, it's yeah. like it's a waste of time. I'm not having fun. I'm not learning anything. You're just you know, we're both just here playing for our teams. It's it's useless. It's pointless. It's like ninety nine percent of all online rhetoric. It's just people arguing in bad faith and playing for their team. And it's 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 a waste of time and energy, as far as I'm concerned. Well, how do we... Let me go into the article yeah. and hit the points that the article says sure. that you should do in order to um, I don't know, bridge that gap, I guess, ultimately, on things that you may... I, I, before the discussion escalates and becomes unproductive is exactly what it says in the article. But the first is find areas where you agree. So, uh, again, I'll ask. I'll start with Cyril. Is there... It, does that something that you try to start with? Find areas where you agree if you know you're going to get into that type of a conversation? I don't know that I ever, like, consciously think that. I don't but know I feel I like when you start a conversation, like, to, yeah. Well, when you start a conversation, let's say you're going to talk about, I don't know, the deficit, right? Do you at least start that conversation potentially saying, "Hey, we both agree that the deficit is a bad thing or a good thing," or you know what I mean? Like, do you find a common ground before? Maybe you have that's a, a good tool. Well, that's a good tool. Well, again, like this is a nuanced take on how to approach a conversation, but even inside of that based on who you're talking to, you can get it even more nuanced and say like, well, is this a good approach to this person or not? So like, yeah, right. like, if right. that's, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. If it's like, okay, well, if they'll start listening to me because I say, well, let's say we both agree to get rid of the deficit and let's start there and go from there, then sure, I would do that. But because I uh, feel like when the conversation devolves into just you know, I want to win type of a thing. You can at least circle Ugh. back and be like, well, at least we both agree that the deficit is a bad idea. We might disagree on how to deal with it, mm. but at least we agree that this particular thing is bad or good or, you know, whatever that might be. Chad, how about you? Do you, anything on that? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the fastest way to change somebody's mind is to gain their empathy for the position you are taking a stand for. Right. Because if I just say ban all guns, uh, which isn't actually something I believe, just to be clear. But if you just say ban all guns, I'm not. because I'm not a liberal. C no, if you say <laughs> ban all guns and somebody is a, a, like strong pro Second Amendment and they're like, are you out of your goddamn mind? Don't touch the fucking guns. You know, those two points of conversation, you're talking past each other. And the reason I bring up guns is actually... Um, find areas where you agree specifically in this article they bring up a good ex i thought it was a good example um, gun control they're saying you could be on one side or the other but both people are concerned about safety to a degree somebody who's pro second amendment is more concerned about their personal like direct safety in their life somebody who's you know wants to let's say restrict gun rights is somebody who's concerned about societal correct. safety you know, You're mass not shooters. Find someone who's like personally offended that guns exist. Like that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Yeah. They're concerned right. about the da the the capacity that correct. You know, the damage that guns could. Now, it can do. be unreasonable concern, but yes, you are correct. Right, yes. but but in both cases, there is an idea of what safety is and how we can ex right. access it or prevent things that are unsafe. Essentially, so if you can start from that, like if you can start from that point then both of you agree okay we're looking for a safe society how do guns factor into that conversation and you can build from there and if you get to a point where you just you cannot agree about anything at the very least you have a position well we're both coming from a place of we're concerned about safety you know and that's what pisses me off a lot about people who just label somebody of the other side as like oh well they hate american values or they hate you know these broad yeah it's these broad comments about like you hate america or you hate americans or you know what i mean it's 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 not being honest about 
I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's straw manning. Whereas if you actually find that fundamental place where you both agree and you both agree that the other person is just concerned for the, the well-being of society, then at least you can empathize with the ideas they have, not necessarily the ideas themselves, though. If right, we do so not issue a tank to every single American, <laughs> you're not a patriot. You're not a patriot. All right, go ahead. I mean, that's true. But anyway, the next item here <laughs> is be open and yeah. kind. And per- particularly for this one, I I hesitate on that, right? I don't know if I get into an overtly aggressive situation that I want to be open about anything. I, I get the being kind right, of you just close up. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, cool. I, I totally understand where you're coming from, guy. You know, like that's kind of the yeah, no, depending on how aggressive somebody might be towards a particular topic. Right. Um, I'm not going to just be open and be like, well, I actually disagree with you because no. That's you know why I mean? I'd like, like, yeah, that's why I disagreed ahead. with some of this. Sorry, go ahead. So yeah. Is there something you disagree particularly to that as I do? or? Yeah, you know, obviously no personal attacks. Like, I think we all can agree that like if you're in a conversation with someone, you should never personally attack them. That shouldn't even be part of the arguments that you're making, like personal personal parts of it shouldn't even be a part of it right um but like you're right like you don't have to always like be open to like if someone's like oh we like you know cut the femoral arteries of babies and suck their blood you're you're not gonna be like oh let me be open and kind to this like (laughs) it's not (laughs) it's ridiculous like so yeah i don't and that's an exaggeration but like caleb's point is correct to say like i do think that there is more respect like, you be more respectful to that person who just had those views that I just espoused if you just don't even converse with them and just let them be, as opposed to even just, like, humor them. Like, that's... Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Caleb's right. Like... Yeah. Open and kind only goes so far. Like that's, yeah. You have to... It's all on how you interpret those words. Um, don't personally attack anybody ever. That's No, correct, of course. But of course. Or just, like, yeah. Because the... It's more just, like, understand if you have nothing to do here. You have nothing to do here. So... And then you start talking about mud and... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you want to have that conversation Says, right now? No. No. Do you go mudding a lot, Cyril? I had some boys that did down in Georgia. <laughs> but no, I some never good went. old boys, I'm sure. Um... <laughs> they would uh, rip the femoral... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> Lord. No, Jen, but... How about you I, I mean, open and kind? Yeah, this this is... It'll only get you so far. <laughs> and again, right, if you so ever, I if, think we all agree on that one. Yeah, right? if you, if you <laughs> if you get to a point in a conversation where being open and kind isn't viable or it's actually not being helpful, then you shouldn't be having that conversation to begin with. Um, but again, you, you just shut it down. when you talk to somebody and you have aggressive disagreements, well, when you have very separate beliefs, I should say. Um, obviously don't be patronizing don't be like flippant yeah, don't just yeah. straw man them or call them stupid or dumb the that's left. a that's wow well, the right <laughs> <laughs> the libtards and the conservatives yeah it's a waste yeah. it's a waste of t- again it's a waste the of left time it's trying to cancel thanksgiving <laughs> all right <I'm> just <laughs> sorry yeah, well, surprised you don't do more caricatures the other way. Well, this year it was well, no, because you know why they some people accuse the left of canceling Thanksgiving this year because there was a pandemic, so there was like people like Dr. Fauci saying like, "Yo, you should limit your contact." So oh, of course were... they just went off the deep end and they're like, "That try and you know." I thought you were saying that like with Christopher Columbus, like they want to change that to Native American Day. Oh, no, I don't even... They haven't even done that officially, I don't think. It's actually First Nation People's Day. Sorry, sorry. sorry, No, it was just related to, like, COVID, and because people (laughs) were like, hey, don't be in contact with people, people were like, oh, they are going to cancel Thanksgiving. All right, anyways. You know, the next one, Chad, I'll move over to you. Keep calm when tensions rise, and I feel like the reason why I'm pointing to you is because I feel like you do better than Cyril and I do when it comes to keeping calm. Barely. This okay. one just means don't get got. Don't get got. Who's winning the game, my guy? That's correct. That's all this is. Who's That's winning all the game? It's true. You know who's losing the game <laughs> is correct. the one that does get upset, though. You lo- you just lose. Right. You lose. Right. Correct. Right. Well, it's not necessarily upset. 
but most of the time it is. It's just like bother. <laughs> you know what I'm up. saying? Like it could if be you get worked up. <sighs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this, I feel like this that's all we have to say about that one, right? Like, don't don't lose the game. Well, this is what people do online all the time, <laughs> and you know what? Some people go into a conversation looking for confrontation. They want to go to bat for their team. They want to dunk on somebody. They want to call somebody a fucking moron. Right. You know, right. and so- and I get why that's cathartic because you get very frustrated with just everything these days. But just know that when you engage with stuff like that. You're just adding to the garbage, so just don't do it. Right, and just don't do it. I get why it's cathartic. Like, don't do it though. This and a lot of other stuff just circles back to character, character of the person, right? That you're listening to or engaging. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, like if it's someone who can't really keep calm at all, then they're probably not a genuine person and you probably should engage with them so there you go yeah don't... I mean, a lot of this stuff kind of comes back to that but yeah don't have those conversations <laughs> it's just so the yeah. next one is yeah. have conversation goals which i find interesting because to me the article takes a turn from like you know ha- you, you know you're going to be in a conversation like this as opposed to this one have conversation goals feels like to me like you're the one that's going to be engaging people which if you know you're about to go into some, you know, heated, heavy discussion, I, I get where having conversational goals is a good thing. But uh, do you want? I mean, if you're I don't know. that deep into, right, people being upset with each other over this kind of stuff, like maybe your conversational goal is, hey, how was soccer practice? Or have you been to the driving range lately? How's that nine iron, my guy? <laughs> you know, things like that. Not. Hey, have you heard or about have the you been saved by abortion? Jesus They're Christ. ripping straight out of mothers or something like that. Oh, like, no, why don't whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go there. Let's talk about golf or football or Yeah, but you're not gonna I mean you might yes. disagree about golf or football, but you're not gonna like I don't know. When you when it comes to worldview, that's when people uh so conversation goals are subjective, obviously. Well, I, I do think I read this and I was like, you know what, that's that's actually something that i should keep in mind because there's plenty of times where i've caught myself in conversation um and i don't know i feel like a lot of people have conversations these days and again i kind of just mentioned this but like their end goal isn't to change somebody's mind their end goal is to vent their end goal is to just go to bat for their team and it's like it's it really doesn't add much to the whole conversation when your end goal is to just do not. circle jerk a little bit about the things that you believe in and then dip out after you've pissed off everybody. And it's like, why do people enjoy doing that? I mean, I get why people enjoy doing that, but it it's... Yeah. So if you go into a conversation saying, okay, well, my goal with this conversation is to, at a minimum, have them empathize with the thing I believe in. Just empathize that it's a, a, a genuine position. That might be a lot more productive. Um, and this is something that I should take more seriously because again, I find myself in a position a lot where I'm, I'm talking to somebody that I have a wildly different worldview. Um, and I kind of just, I'm, again, I'm passive, like I'll have a conversation, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to push a lot. But if I were to be a little more proactive about like, okay, well, let me hint a little bit more about the things that I have a worldview about and, and why to me those things are reasonable rather than like the demonized idea that you have of somebody that might subscribe to those ideas that's that's productive especially if you can pop somebody's bubble man if you can pop somebody's bubble and you know this is for left and right because there are plenty of people who who are surrounded by and surround themselves by people who just agree with them so if you can pop that bubble a little bit and you say hey listen i'm somebody that's completely on the other side of the aisle than you but like i'm a good person and i have good intentions and my goal is a better society then that's that's productive that is that is progress of a sort. Yeah. Even if somebody still wildly disagrees with you, if at the very least they think you're not trying to actively destroy the country, that's progress. But okay, okay. Well, the next one here on the item list uh, for the article is accept that you may not change the other person's mind, which is wholly like one of the top 
top things that I always think about. Like, remember that you're going into this conversation full and well knowing that no matter what you do, they're going to disagree with you. So the only thing I want to do is hopefully offer some slightly different perspective and then be okay with it. Like, at least I've done my piece. I've said, hey, you know, have you ever considered X, Y, Z about this topic? Um, to your point, Chad, right? Hopefully I'm I'm popping that bubble a little bit. Hopefully I'm just pushing ever so slightly to the point where they might be like, okay, well, all right, I get where you're coming from. Right. Like, to me, that's a win as opposed to be like going into a conversation sure. saying, I'm going to change this person from being hard right to, uh, you know, serial Marxist left. <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? That's never going to happen. So um, be time. mindful. <laughs> being mindful of the fact that you're not going to change their mind is really important. <laughs> yeah. Cyril, what do you think about your Marxist? No, it is, look again, yeah. you circle back to like intention of the person you're talking to. Like, I feel like this is a roadmap to like understanding if the person you're talking to is worth your time or not. Like, um, there's a lot of people who, and I think it's just the, the culture in, I don't even want to say internet culture, but let's say the internet combined with everything's for profit and clicks has just trained my brain. And I think most of us to feel like most of the time it's not honest conversation because that's mm. not like what's being sold and what we're seeing. We're, what, what's being sold and what we're seeing is like shock, like weird bullshit. Cause that's like right. what generates. Um, but um yeah, and it kind you know, of. I do think, for the most part, like if you think about what happens in your day to day life, circling back to not being able to change the other person's mind, I don't even think that kind of stuff comes across people's minds when you have an honest conversation in day to day life in person. There's there's something to be said about like an expectation of this is a stranger and like just that honest like I'll give them due deference because they're a human being in person that just doesn't get done on the internet or i guess you're not even looking for a conversation on the internet you're just searching for like what you want to search for so um like it just comes back to like i don't know I, I'll, if you do a lot of this stuff in person then you'll get it these days as a you know yeah it's we have, we have less of that that's all well it's just so. easier to empathize with someone when you can actually see them right in front of you um and yeah and there, and 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 there's no expectation like you're talking to some let's say you get randomly caught up let's say you're at, a, at college right and you're a young person you get randomly caught up in conversation maybe philosophical that that in some areas may touch or like touch the fringe of politics but it still stays philosophical there's no part in that conversation where either one the beauty of it is there's no part where either one's thinking like i'm going to change the other person's mind like there's just a conversation do you know what i'm saying so um yeah your end goal should never be you're going to change somebody's mind because you're just, yeah right you're right. just going to be disappointed your end goal yeah. might be well you know hopefully this person can see where i'm coming from a little bit and that's, I think that's a reasonable end goal, but I don't know. For me, it's like uh, going to the casino. All the money you put down on that table, you should expect to lose it because that's just a healthy mindset to be in. Because <laughs> then, yeah, then if things don't go well, okay, then we can just, we'll just, you know, we'll cut loose and we'll walk away. Yeah, and there's such a huge difference in approaching any random person or conversation with the mindset of, I feel this way and I'm going to see if I can make this person yeah, that's... understand what I feel as opposed to like you're approaching some sort of conversation or whatever person. And you're thinking like, well, I I've, I've felt this way because X, Y, Z let me hear this out and kind of mesh it all together um, and see what's good. You know, and a lot of times you may mesh it all together and the, what the person is telling you is RWNJ garbage. Or, you what know, is RWNJ? Right wing nut job. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that one. That's a new one for me. Yeah, it's definitely an online term. So, or, you know, they're espousing you... Marxism. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you another 
thing that I've done, and I do a lot. In fact, if you listen back to some of our OG stuff on YouTube for our conversations here on Three Bros, Oof. you'll notice that I tend to antagonize Cyril and Chad sometimes <laughs> when we all agree on something. So my question is, is have you guys ever done that in practice, like in the real world with your yeah. friends or coworkers or family, where you know that you 100% agree with a person, <laughs> but you just provide a separate view or another set of opinions and, and propose it to them and say, well, how do you deal with X or how do you deal with Y? That's yeah. something that I love doing with Cyril specifically, because I feel like for Cyril and I, both of us, it allows both of us to say, okay, let me try a different perspective, a different set of shoes and see if it works for me. So, and I feel like the way we think about things as, as people is very, this is what I think, here's why. And the here's why is very important to us. So, of course, nothing is perfect and we all know that, but we all still have opinions. And I think a lot of our opinions are based off of here's why. And I think we all can also admit that there's a lot of opinions we might have where we can think of, even if someone agrees with us, especially if someone agrees with us, we're curious as to what they think about the some of the here's why arguments that there might be. So you, it's easy to play devil's advocate when you think that way, when you need to have something to back up what you're thinking instead of just throwing darts at a wall or saying that Jesus loves you and floats around you. Um, you know, I think in that way, you can also understand where there might be holes in your argument. Now, obviously whether or not you have your own internal arguments, even against those is whatever, but it's easy. My point is it's easy to, I do that all the time because it's easy to say like, okay, well they agree with me, but, and I know, you know, because of this opinion, I have this consequence might come of it. You know, I, I kind of want to see what they think of it. So yeah, I do that. I do that a lot. Chad, how about you? Do you ever do that? All the time. Uh, but only with people that I'm comfortable with. And they yeah, usually yeah. low-key know that I'm just trolling them a little bit. But it is fun. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. It, you know what it is, is? is You know what? To be fair, it, it's, it's, it's usually very practical to put on those different pants and act in accordance with something that you disagree with. Um, something that I always thought was extremely interesting and i think i mentioned this in our last podcast actually so there's the idea of the straw man argument where you take somebody you take what somebody's arguing for and you sort of attack a thing that doesn't really mesh with what it is they're actually arguing for it's a straw man it's like a but there's also something called the iron man argument um where you take the strongest arguments that somebody has in favor of their position and you sort of run those up against your belief and you see how things sort of mesh out. So if you were going to put on um, like the pants of having a different perspective and you were to honestly try and argue for it, you can learn a lot real quick that way. Uh, I wish we would have renamed this podcast the Iron Man argument because that's <laughs> the thing that i like to do the most right is to take something that somebody very strongly believes in and has good arguments for and say okay let me put this into my working framework of what i believe and how i operate and how i live my life and does it work or does it not work and why or why not does it work and, and i really appreciate when we can have those type of discussions yeah i mean i've even in high school i was uh you know generally pro-choice and I had a debate class where I was assigned a position to argue a pro-life position. And I think I probably learned, and I've heard some more compelling arguments since then as far as the pro-life, but I think I learned the most about the pro-life position when I literally was assigned the duty of arguing for that position. It's like, oh, shit, I don't want to lose the debate, but like, this is I something I agree with. Dude, I remember doing that. What was it? Was that pig, maybe? Um, for me, that was actually a career and developments class or something to that effect. Okay, that's odd. But I think I but did something like that. In pig, pig as well. And had to argue pig as well, yeah. Lowering the drinking age. And I was arguing for it, and I did a very good job of doing it, and I did it from the perspective of, well, if you can join the military and give your life at 18 years old, you should be able to have an alcoholic beverage. 
Mm. And I did that because I was joining the military. <laughs> sure. And then I joined the military and realized, no, fuck that. These are all idiots. <laughs> we should no, we should raise the drinking age for fuck's sake at this point. Well, I was going to say, I also had a uh, current events class in high school, which was like more of an actual debate class. And I was assigned the uh, pro-legalization position on marijuana. And I was like, oh, pff, I'm not going to learn anything new. I already, <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything I'm about to argue has been shit I've been talking about for years. But, you know. Well, let me keep going on the article here. <clears throat> sure. So the next one is disagreeing with someone you care about is okay. And this is really, really, really fucking important, I think. Yeah. For people who are in families that they ardently or vehemently disagree about a particular topic and and you have to remember that that's okay you can care about somebody and completely disagree on anything whether it's religion politics you know i don't care what it is even if it's sporting events like oh miami sucks go buffalo or you know whatever it is you can still care about people even if you disagree fuck tom brady i feel like people really really forget that and completely miss the mark on stuff like that yeah and again like i don't know it's sort of implied in here disagreeing with someone you if you care about somebody that means that you give them the patience that they probably deserve you know if you for me this goes to religion specifically because there's a lot of religions out there that if you're not a part of it you can go pound salt you can go bye-bye right Mm. and that's crazy because in a lot of those religions, like a, a, a pillar of a lot of them is to be friendly to your neighbor and to love thy neighbor and to, you know, to, to ensure community regardless of what they may or may not believe. Not if you're going to hell, Caleb. Well, um, but no, you're 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 definitely not wrong. Uh, well, religion gets a little more complicated because you're talking about like absolute truth. And it's it's that's a yeah, that's a tough well, but again, at the end of the day, your religion tells you that you need to be reaching out and saving other people, whether it be the gospel, whether it be, uh, you know, being a Jehovah's Witness, whether it's being uh, Muslim or, or, or part of Islam. Like the whole point is to convert people, right? You're not going to convert every, anybody if you just shame the fuck out of them. Well, that's true. I guess every religious person should be reading this article because anytime that I've been, you know, approached about certain things it's always been (laughs) in very dire terms that's not how you convince somebody of the truth of your position by just low-key threatening them with eternal punishment but you know that's neither here nor there yeah we're gonna move on to that we could do (laughs) two three hours on the eternal punishment piece of religion but um i'm gonna skip this one i'm gonna go to the last one which is be proactive which I find it interesting because what is it that you're being proactive about? I guess, you know, ultimately, let me pull the article up. I apologize. My my phone just locked on me, but let's see here. Be proactive. I think it means um, be pro. Yeah. So go ahead. Sorry, Cyril. I think it means be not be proactive with like controversial discussion, but like be proactive with like being a human being and a normal person. <laughs> like. Like read it. Like yeah. it means. Like, no, it does. It's, it's like, pretty much. Hey, business. like have a nice time. Don't be a fucking loser. Like yeah. Don't you know, remember these events are about bringing people together. Yeah. Basically, don't be divisive. Like, because you guys were just talking about religion, and I think the biggest issue that we all have with religion is that at the end of the day, it's telling people what to do, which I don't like. You shouldn't do that, and I think the Church of Cyril Dunham is. Nothing if not, look, at the end of the day, you should just respect human beings, right? Like, if at the end of the day, like, I respect only people who are, like, Baptist Christians from northeast Georgia, it's like, that's ridiculous. Like, like you're choosing to just, you know. To just just not alienate people. You know what the problem is? Is there is plenty of discourse that takes place today, whether it be alternative media or mainstream media, where it genuinely puts these disagreements in such dire terms that you almost have to believe that when you meet somebody, even if they're a family member that is, let's say, a leftist, and you're somebody that's, you know, super pro-Trump, it's like, well, the discussion that we usually have in these dire straits is that people who are on the left hate this country. 
They want open borders. They want to destroy, you know, nationalism. So, it's like you can't. It's hard to talk in these the biggest, terms in terms of your political discourse and then look at somebody who disagrees with you with an empathetic mind. It's just the wild irony is the biggest. Chad, tell me, who are the biggest news outlets that Trump rails against? CNN, fake news. Wait, like not these days or just Whatever, in general? CNN, Washington Post, yeah. Broadcast yeah. News. Fox New News Time. a little bit. Who are the biggest people that love Trump and stand to lose a lot of eyeballs and subscribers after Trump goes away? One American <laughs> News Network, Newsmax. Nope, that's correct. You know exactly where I'm Fox fucking going news. with that and you're trolling me. You're bullshit, and you know you're bullshit. <laughs> Fox News. No, like, Breitbart. Listen, the CNNs, literally every news channel of the world loves Trump because Trump drives news. It will make us watch more. I'm not going to watch as much of Biden's in power because it's Biden. He's boring. Like, it's what it is. It's true. Yeah. Okay. But nope, that's fair. You yeah, tell me gonna, I'm wrong? Go no, ahead. we're going to get into a whole other discussion no. <laughs> if we try to go down that rabbit hole. I'm not saying you're wrong. Which leads me into my what. last item, which is no when to but... end the conversation. <laughs> is that why you skipped that? Hell yeah. Was that your outro? Was the... Do, no, no, go no look at ratings pre-2016 and post-2016. I'm not saying you're wrong, Cyril. I'm just saying... I didn't, I, I didn't say you were. I'm just stating a fact. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no one ended the conversation is definitely very CNN's important. so liberal they're gonna make less money when trump gone so liberal so i appreciate anybody that has made it this far into the podcast and remember that if you have to have these difficult conversations with family members remember that at the end of the day you can still love them and care for them even if they disagree yeah. with your position yeah, be weird. yeah just be true. mindful right yeah. you know that you're not going to change their thoughts you're not going to change their ideas and make sure that at the end of the day you still get to enjoy your christmas and or holiday just remember that most people who live in this country have opinions, and those opinions are based on the idea that they believe that's what's best for the country. If we can just all get to that point, even if it's somebody that's oh, like, we're not gonna do it. no, I know we're not going to do it, but if we could get to that point, that'd be great. We could stop, stop treating each other like real pieces of shit and just splitting families in half regularly every time holidays roll around. But uh, just, just be a good person. Easy for a Marxist to say. Yes, yeah, Cyril. Karma, karma you, is Chad. not <laughs> karma is not real in the superstitious sense. Wow. It is real in the sense that if you treat people like complete and utter garbage, it's going to come back to hurt you in life over true. and over again. But if you don't, then it will reward you over and over again. Oh, there's it's this heart. There's this incredible. Welcome. There's this incredible video about a guy who's like a flat earther, and he's like a YouTuber. And he's in his kitchen and he's trying to film a video. He's holding like a grapefruit and like a, I don't know. He's just like doing something. These are the planets, whatever. And his wife walks through the kitchen and she's like, can you just cut this shit out? She's like, not, not today, Mark, not this morning. And it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's clearly you some tension in this <laughs> household, bro. You gotta say that. Not today, funny. Mark. <laughs> and, he, and he shuts it off. And then he uploaded it. He uploaded that under the title of, like, living with a globalist. It's like, Jesus. No. Dude, I bet you he's unemployed. And she's, well, like, at listen. her wit's end. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? From... From the Three Bros oh, yes. podcast, all the globalists are here. Hey, don't ignore your wives. Appreciate your time. Don't ignore your significant others, no, whoever that may be. Give us a clap. There are four Hopefully, corners. We will see you next time. <laughs> Open Thanks your eyes, sheep. Hey, so does that mean there's a dome that's like encasing?